What's up guys, we're back with Pokemon Unbound. That's right, probably my favorite ROM hack of all time. And today we're gonna be doing another title defense battle against none other than Marlin. Yesterday I posted a poll under the community tab, although it'll probably be a week ago by the time this video goes up. But I was asking if you guys wanted to see the short or the long version of this battle. And the people have spoken, you guys wanted to see the long version. So let's get right to it, here we go. So every time you rematch the Elite Four in the post game, you get to battle someone different, and this time we got Marlin. And this is insane mode, of course, so it was not an easy battle. He's gonna lead with Darkrai, and we start with Weavile. And this Darkrai is a super annoying lead to deal with. As you're gonna see here, he goes right for the Dark Void, right out the gate. And this is a move that puts us to sleep, and it was originally 80% accuracy. I don't know if they lowered it to 60% accuracy in the game, but either way, it feels like 100% accuracy. We are ready for the first one. We wake up with the Chesto Berry and we attack with Triple Axle. We land all three shots. We cannot afford to miss here and we deal about half of his health. Darkrai misses the second Dark Void and we're good to go. We go for Triple Axle again. We just need to land all three shots again, but Darkrai survives on just one HP, just barely hanging in there. It's super unfortunate. Now this interaction between Darkrai and Weavile can go so many different ways. Weavile and Darkrai are actually speed tied here. And if Darkrai hits more than one Dark Void, it's basically reset we have to get good rng in that interaction so darkrai switches out for rotom wash and rotom wash is going to tank the ice shard in place of darkrai and save his life so now that rotom's on the field we want to switch to gudra now rotom goes for defog here and the main reason why he always likes to go for defog is because most of his moves are low accuracy moves he has hydro pump and will-o-wisp so now that our evasion's low we've got to be careful however gudra is a great counter to rotom wash here and he recognizes that so he goes for the volt switch the switch out into zapdos marlin's team is just stacked full of OP legendary Pokemon, but Zapdos is gonna tank the Dragon Pulse instead, and he tanks it pretty well, but Gudra's not a very good matchup for Zapdos here, so we're gonna make the switch to Garchomp. And the reason why we switch is because this Zapdos is actually a physical attacker. He goes for the Brave Bird, and we're not gonna type resist this, but don't worry, Garchomp has this under control, we've got a plan. So we would've rather seen Bolt Peak there, because Garchomp would immune it. But when he goes for Brave Bird, Garchomp's gonna Mega Evolve, and this is gonna give us just enough of a defense boost to survive a second Brave Bird. However, Zapdos decides to go for a U-turn instead and go back to Marlin. You don't want the smoke, but either way, someone's gonna have to eat this outrage, and Eveltal comes out. It is it Yveltal or Eveltal? I know one of you guys in the comments is gonna correct me on that pronunciation. But the outrage doesn't even deal that much damage. Eveltal tanks it like crazy. A stab outrage from a Mega Garchomp didn't even deal half damage to Eveltal. I guess he is a legendary Pokemon after all, but holy smokes. So Garchomp goes down to the Dark Poles, and we're gonna bring Weavile back out to take care of this Eveltal. And we've got a great position here. Weavile's faster, we outspeed him, go for the Triple Axle, and we cannot even think about missing here. We cannot afford to miss. All three hits connect, and Eveltal goes down to the Triple Axle. And that's one down, five to go, as Alolan Marowak comes out next. Now this Marowak, for whatever reason, has very bad AI, and is very easy to exploit. So this is the time that we're gonna use to set up. We know he wants to go for Flame Charge, here so we're gonna switch Weavile out for our main man Gyarados. We get the Intimidate on him which is good because Marowak is a physical attacker and as predicted he goes for the flame charge. The Intimidate is gonna help because it buys us more time. He wants to boost his attack and speed as much as possible but he only has flame charge to use so Gyarados is gonna resist it and tank it like it's nothing. So Marowak even in the face of a Gyarados, is gonna spam Flame Charge. He wants to boost his speed as much as possible, but we're gonna do the same. We go for Dragon Dance and get that plus one speed, plus one attack as well. But don't worry guys, this is still the long version of this battle. In the short version that you guys voted that you didn't wanna see, I totally just set up all the way on this Marowak, along with some good RNG and a couple missed moves. Gyarados is able to sweep the whole team, but in this version, things take a turn for the worse. So we got off two Dragon Dances. It's time to take this thing out. We go for the Waterfall and Marowak goes down in one shot. Now I was a little scared of that Swords Dance, but the reality is even after that Swords Dance, Marowak can't do much damage at all to Gyarados. And in reality, you can just set up all the way with Dragon Dance and sweep the team. We decided to go for it at plus two. Rotom comes out and tanks a crunch like it's nothing. A plus two crunch is gonna put an end to our sweep, goes for the Volt Switch, and Gyarados unfortunately goes down. So Rotom goes back, Zapdos comes back out. Now, 
I do quite like this version of the battle because every Pokemon here gets a chance to shine. This is the OG Elite Four team. We had to bring everyone back to run it back. And we're going to bring out Gliscor to take care of the Zapdos. So Gliscor actually doesn't hit very hard. He's more of a utility Pokemon. First thing we want to do is go for the knockoff, but Zapdos is faster. He hits us with the U-turn and goes back to Marla. Beedrill comes out next. And at first I was stoked because this is Mega Beedrill. We hit him with the knockoff and... I was thinking that it would knock off the Beedrill Light or the Beedrill Light, <laughs> this is Mega Stone, but apparently Mega Stones can't get knocked off. So Beedrill's gonna go ahead and Mega Evolve into Mega Beedrill. Nothing we can do about that. And Beedrill, despite being a puny Route 1 Pokemon, Mega Beedrill actually hits pretty hard. So first turn we wanna protect to Scout, but he just tries to U-turn and we're gonna stall him for a turn. And I told you guys this was gonna be a long one. I'm not built for these 12 minute videos anymore, man, but gonna be a whole lot of stalling and switching i do quite like these long battles though we switch aegislash into the u-turn and we tank it like it's nothing aegislash is a great matchup versus b drill here but he's gonna u-turn out and come back into rotom wash now we're gonna king shield here not because rotom has any physical contact move he's a special attacker but we really want to do this just to scout but he goes for the defog this ends up being a misplay and we waste a turn our evasiveness is going to drop and now he's going to be able to hit his hydro pumps and willow wisps better and willow wisp is something that we definitely don't want aegislash to get hit by so we're going to switch out into our only special attacker on the team gudra rotom does indeed go for the willow wisp and it's a really good thing that we made that switch Gudra doesn't care too much about a burn, and Gudra is also the best check we have to Rotom here. He goes for a defog, lowering our evasiveness, and I'm actually surprised that he didn't switch out with Volt Switch here. But anyways, despite the attack drop from the burn, we try to go for Power Whip. I thought it would do a little bit more damage than that. And it's super effective, but either way, it doesn't deal much damage at all, and he heals right back up with the berry. So we're actually running a mixed set here on Gudra, but it's about time that we start using our special attacks. Rotom attacks with the Hydra Pump, and this is going to deal no damage to Gudra. Even being a critical hit, Gudra is just a special defense monster. We go for the Acid Spray. It's not going to deal very much damage, but more importantly, we harshly lower his special defense. Now, this is going to set us up perfectly for the next turn, but we're running out of time. We are burned. The clock is ticking. Gudra is bulky, but not that bulky. We tank another Hydra Pump, just barely hanging on for dear life. Gudra hangs in there just enough to get one more attack off, but the Dragon Pulse does a lot of damage, but it's not quite enough to finish him off. Now, Gudra did pretty good here. We got him super low, but unfortunately, we are going to go down to the Hydra Pump. Hey, guys, just real quick. If you like Pokemon ROM hat content like this, remember to like the video. It helps out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Help us get to 1,000 subs if you want to see more content like this. And hit the bell for notifications to be reminded for new videos as well. All right, so now that we've got Rotom super low, all we need is a Pokemon to come in and fire off a priority move. Luckily, we've got Egg Slash to get the job done. We hit him with the Shadow Sneak, and Rotom finally goes down. That's three down, three more to go. This battle's far from over, and Zapdos comes back out. Now, Zapdos is a physical attacker. We could King Shield to lower his attack harshly, but the Zapdos has the Defiant ability, which basically would nullify the attack drop from the King Shield anyway. So we're going to switch into Gliscor. Zapdos tries to Bolt Beak, but Gliscor immunes it. Gliscor is a ground type, and Zapdos can't do much here. All he really has is U-Turn and Heat Wave, but Heat Wave's not going to burn us because we're already poisoned, so he resorts to all he can do is U-Turn out and go into Beedrill. Beedrill takes the knockoff in place of Zapdos and just slowly chipping away at his health. Even Mega Beedrill is not the most bulky Pokemon, so it's not going to take too much to get his health down but either way this is not the best matchup for Gliscor so we're going to switch back into Aegislash. Beedrill tries to go for Poison Jab but Aegislash immunes it and we could have stayed in there with Gliscor if we had a flying type moves but unfortunately we're, we're kind of running a weird set on Gliscor right now so Aegislash is going to be the better matchup here. We harshly lower his attack with King Shield and this is a great position to be in here. Even Beedrill's super effective drill run despite being super effective is still not going to deal very much damage against Aegislash and Aegislash can just tank super effective moves like it's nothing. In hindsight, I think having weakness policy here would have been better than leftovers, but regardless, even without an attack boost from weakness policy, Mega Beedrill is going to go down to the Shadow Claw. As we said earlier, even Mega Beedrill is not very bulky. Slowly but surely, Marlin is starting to run out of Pokemon, and Zapdos comes back out once again. So here we always King Shield first. We're going to get leftovers heals either way. Zapdos doesn't have any setup moves, so this is always the best play. Zapdos attacks with Bolt Beak, which is a contact move. His attack gets harshly lowered, but 
As we said earlier, Zapdos does have Defiant, and this is going to essentially neutralize the attack drop from the King Shield, but we end the turn with more health than we started. Now we know Zapdos wants to Bolt Beak here, we're going to switch back into Gliscor, a whole lot of switching this match, a whole lot of counterplay, and a whole lot of cat and mouse. As predicted, Zapdos does go for the Bolt Beak, Gliscor immunes it and gets a free switch. Now Zapdos is running out of options, instead of trying to U-turn out, he attacks with Heat Wave but misses. We get off the knockoff and Zapdos' heavy boots come off. I don't know if those heavy boots were doing much this game, but either way, it's going to deal double damage from the knockoff. Heat Wave connects this time, but Gliscor is a trooper. It deals less than half damage. We get off the Ice Fang, but Gliscor doesn't hit very hard. Despite being super effective, Zapdos just barely hangs on for dear life at 1 HP. And weird AI here. Marlin's going to retreat Zapdos and go back into Darkrai, who we have not seen since the beginning of the battle. Either way, Darkrai is going to eat the knockoff, and because he was already so low on HP, he's going to go down in one shot. And it's pretty much checkmate at this point. Marlin suffering in the hands of defeat. Once again, Zapdos comes out for one final hurrah to go out in a blaze of glory. Literally blaze of glory. He attacks with Heat Wave, but we're not scared of this. We already know Gliscor can tank it. And we hang on just fine, attack with the knockoff, and Zapdos goes down. That's GG Marlin. And this was a really hard battle, guys. Super enjoyable and fun, too. I'm definitely glad that we did the long version of this battle. Definitely way more fun than just sweeping the whole team with Gyarados. And the victory feels more rewarding, too. Marlin definitely made us work for it. But that's it for this one, guys. Leave a comment. I always love to hear your thoughts and feedback. Remember to like the video and sub to the channel. And as always, thanks for watching and see you next time.